cross-stitch projects galore? Check. A little bit of haul? Check. Extraneous topics? Check. Floss tuber that talks too much? Check. Floss tube t-shirt? Check. Giant bottle of water and a floss tube itchy nose. I guess it's a floss tube day. How's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Floss Tube, and I am joining you on this Wednesday, June the 13th, 2018. Happy Dark 13 stitching to everybody. I hope that your June 13th is going just a little bit better than mine. Uh, this might be my 13th take because the Floss Tube itchy nose is real today. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, it's itching like cray cray. So we're going to try to get through this without as many jumps as previous um, attempts. And they were just just that. They were just attempts. Um, we're going to try to get through this as seamlessly as possible. I have so much to do today. We're leaving tomorrow for uh, two weeks. <laughs> and I have just uh, an extraordinary to-do list. But I want to get floss tube done today because, say it with me now, I'm trying to get back on track and do videos on Wednesdays. And so we're here and we're going to do this. Um, I know it's only been a few days, but that's okay. Um, I have a lot of topics to talk about, but not a lot in each of those topics. So I'm aiming for under an hour. We'll see how it goes. Um, so far, we're doing okay as far as the nose is concerned. Um, so this one might be the winner. We'll find out. Um, so what do I have today? A little bit of Q&A. Um, I have... An idea for those stitchers who are going to meetups or retreats and are looking for a solution to something, I have an idea for you. Um, I have my shout out. I'm just going to do one this time just for brevity's sake. Then I have my whips, my cross stitch projects I have worked on, as well as what I'm currently working on. Um, I have my plans for the FIFA World Cup Challenge hosted by Stitch Mania. Um, I don't have any other plans than that because... I don't really know what I'm going to work on outside of that. Probably not much um, over these next two weeks or so. Then I have a um, very short, very short segment on haul. Um, and then I have a little bit of books and a little bit of knitting. So, like I said, a lot of topics, but not a ton in each of those topics. And let's so talk about a few things first before I do so. The first is my t-shirt, because I'm sure a lot of you are going to be like... <gasps> And I heart floss tube t-shirt, I want one. So, yeah. Isn't that pretty great? Um, so, I got this from Amazon. But there's a couple of things that you need to know about it first. Um, first of all, um, took about a week to, I'm, sh I'm sure, to have it printed and then sent to me. Um, so, it wasn't like next day. There was no next day option. Um, and it also runs a little bit small. So, if you are looking at ordering one, just keep that in mind. It runs a little small. I am, um, I am squishy. And so this shirt is really wonderful if, um, if I wanted to show off my squishy, uh, but I don't. So, <laughs> um, I'm wearing it for the video today and this might be it until, um, until later. So, um, it's the funny thing. I opened it and I went, oh, look, it's goals. It's not something I can actually wear. It's something that I look forward to fitting in, but not yet. Not yet. Anyway, um, so I am going to make sure and include the link to it in the, uh, in the description down below. There's going to be some name dropping this video. I think that it was Stitching May or Stitcherista or both of them who talked about this shirt. And so I made sure to order one. Um, I ordered it because I missed out on the shopping for the Stitch Con shirt. Yeah, bad. Um, we had plenty of fair warning from Stephanie uh, from Just Keep Stitching on the Stitch Con Facebook page. Plenty of warning. I even set an alarm for June 4th that basically said buy now or lose out. Except that June 4th was my wedding anniversary and so I was all over the place for anniversary shenanigans. So I missed out. So I ordered this and this was meant to be my substitute, but it's too small. It's a little too small. So I guess we'll just go with my face and that'll have to be good enough. 
Anyway, um, so that sort of leads me into the next sort of little comment, and that is my sincerest apologies for being the worst. I am the worst at putting the links that I promised that I'm going to put. Uh, somebody commented on my video from last week. First thing this morning was like, hey, can you link those shout outs that you did? And I went, oh, yes, I will do that. Um, so this video, and since you're watching it, this doesn't affect you whatsoever. Um, but I am not going to hit publish until I get those links and timestamps put in. That is priority number like four when it comes to the video. Film, edit, save, and links. So, you know. Um, so I am sorry for the delay, but I am hoping <laughs> to fix that. It's something for me to work on. It's something, it's something to work towards. It's a goal. Um, and so that will sort of help segue into the next topic, which is thank you. Um, I talked about some heavy stuff last week and uh, with regards to the loss of my friend Jen and the outpouring of love and support, um, I would expect nothing less from the greatest community on earth. I would expect nothing less. So thank you to everybody who reached out and um, who said such kind things. Um, yeah, it's it makes it just a little bit easier to bear um, the tough stuff when you've got like uh, an entire globe's worth of people just at your back. Just it's just wonderful. So I appreciate that. Um, and I also want to thank you for the kind words that you gave towards my hair. Thank you, as all as well as um, the reader. I tend to ramble a little bit when I finish some of the bigger projects, especially those that have such significance to me. Um, but the fact that they are important to you guys as well, that you're invested in the projects as well, I don't know, it's just, it, this is such a solitary hobby, and yet it is not because of Lost Two. You guys make this into a, um, a community effort, so I just appreciate it. So thank you. CK, I'm getting better. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and switch and get going on the things. And I'm going to get into the Q&A. The first question I have is from Lori Grafor. Hey, Lori. Um, and Lori asked if Thor was going with us on vacation. I wish he was, but no. Mm-mm. Um, I'm sure that he would love that. I'm sure that he would love to get to meet the Stitchers at StitchCon and all of the Origins attendants in Columbus. Uh, but no, no, absolutely not. Um, too much to handle um, having having the Bulldog. So he is actually going to um, the hospital that my mom runs. Um, they have... Um, obviously the hospital, the veterinary hospital, as well as a boarding facility. And so he's going to get spoiled rotten. He's the boss's grand dog. So the staff is all going to be like, oh, love it on Thor. <laughs> um, and he's going to have a blast. He's going to be absolutely worn out uh, when I pick him up in two weeks' time, a little less than two weeks. He's going to be exhausted. Um, the... Their boarding facility, they do, like, um, they take videos and they send pictures and whatnot. And so um, I will rifle through those and I'll make sure to include them when I get back. Um, I'm hoping that he's going to come make an appearance, but I make no promises. He has no idea what's coming, but he's also sleeping. So we'll see if he comes and says hi before, before we go. Um, but yeah, no Thor on vacation. Not this time. Uh... Okay, uh, the second question is coming from The Rocking Stitcher, and uh, she asked about my Prairie Schooler alphabet and sort of how I was formatting that and organizing it. So I think that there's a bunch of people doing it now, um, but I think the first time I saw it was Christy with a K. She did hers on three panels, and so it was three pieces of fabric, and they each had nine letters. And so there will be this one and then two more with the rest of the alphabet. And the math just works out beautifully because there are 26 letters and a 27th block for the ampersand. Um, and so that divides very nicely by three. And then there's all sorts of um, three rows of three. It's just wonderful. 
Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to have ABC on this block, which all three of those have been started. And then I started on D for drum, even though it just says rum. But that's the plan. So I'm going to have three of these. Uh, much more manageable to frame than the full 27 like uh, Jan from Thread Garden had done. Woo! That is an undertaking. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's my plan with that. And I know that a lot of people are doing it that way. It's just, it's an easy way to, to handle all of that. Um, so yeah, that's the Prairie Schooler Alphabet. By the way, thanks everybody for your votes and helping me decide what to work on this week. Obviously that one didn't win. We'll talk about that later. Um, the third, it's not really a question, um, but one vote that I got was from Lauren and she said, uh, I think you should go off this plan and work on Opus Maggie by Long Dog Samplers, um, which is of course Opus 2 aka Maggie. And Lauren, I am right there with you. <laughs> I want to work on that. If I do this monogamous to a finish thing again, I think that Opus 2 is probably going to be the one that I do it with uh, because I'm just, I'm feeling that. I'm in the mood for it. It may not be until August because I have some plans for July. Um, Joan Elliott July is coming and so um, who knows? We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but maybe in August I will, I will go monogamous on opus too but then stitch and mommy is talking about doing this wild whip thing which sounds like fun i don't know by the way sarah i'm trying to think of a hashtag <laughs> i watched your video but i was watching it on tv and so i didn't get to uh, come up with a comment but i am trying to think of a hashtag um if you haven't already come up with something i just i don't know so we'll see okay um so that is it for the q a Next, let's do uh, let's do floss tube shout out. So I'm just shouting out one person today. Um, just keeping things simple and keeping things short. I haven't watched a whole lot of floss tube over the last few days, but I did watch some this morning. So I finished up an audiobook I was listening to yesterday. Didn't have anything else queued up, and so this morning I was like. All right, floss tube it is. And the first thing that popped up on my recent uploads in my subscription feed was from Christine at Every Stitch a Pleasure. And she's going to be at StitchCon next week. So I thought, well, what a better opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and watch Christine this morning. I've been subscribed to her channel for a while, but as you guys know, floss tube can be a full time job. And since my watching kind of fluctuates a little bit, sometimes I'm watching all of it, sometimes I'm not watching any. It's hard for me to keep up with everybody. And Christine is one of those um, where I just, I haven't had an opportunity to spend some time and watch her channel. But I did watch her most recent, which was uploaded this morning. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed her content and um, her manner. I loved her channel. Some of my favorite floss tubers <laughs> will... Um, make me do things. And by that I mean I'll be watching their video happily enjoying what they're talking about and then all of a sudden I find myself pausing and googling something or buying something. It happens more often than I care to admit. Anyway, um, so that's what happened while I was watching Christine's video. I had to look up the stitching parlor and more specifically her Jane Austen inspired designs or stitching parlors. I don't know if it's a she or a he or a they. I don't know. Um, Stitching Parlor has a series of designs inspired by Jane Austen works, and yeah, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. They're kind of long, but not very tall, um, and I guess there's several of them based on a bunch of different works. I don't know. I just know that I might need the daughters at Longbourn. I might need that. <laughs> so, of course, now there's this chart that I need that's hard to find, another one. Just put it on the pile of lists of things that I need that I don't know if I'll ever be able to locate. Um, so anyway, so that was pretty great. Um, Christine is also a board gamer. And um, at the end of her video, her husband does this sort of like after stitch thing. And he was hiking around Juneau, Alaska, which is where they live. And that was wonderful, getting to see Juneau. 
Um, I would love to live in Alaska. I would love that. I am so much more built for the cold weather. Um, and from what I understand, Alaska is just beautiful. And I would love to live out there, but it's too far from Blacksburg. <laughs> so, say lovey. Um, but anyway, I really enjoyed Christine. I'm looking forward to getting to meet her next week. I'm looking forward to getting to meet everybody at StitchCon. Um, I'm so excited for, for that event and for getting to see some people that I got to see a few weeks ago and meeting some new faces and it's going to be nuts and it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Um, speaking of StitchCon, I am not the most outgoing person. I'm not the, hi, I'm Jessie, <laughs> kind of, kind of girl. It's not me. Um, so please come up and say hi um, if, if you want. Um, but if you're waiting for me to, I probably won't because I'm just, it's just not me. It's just not my style. Uh, yeah. I'll give you a hug, but yeah, it's not my, my style to be like, hi, I'm me. <laughs> anyway, um, so looking forward to it. Okay, so now let's talk about um, something that I have picked up along the way that might be helpful to, to some of you out there. I know that there are a lot of people flying, um, particularly to StitchCon, but just to retreats in general, uh, this might be beneficial to you. So I was watching a video several weeks ago. This must, must have been a month or more ago. It was Magnolia Nana, and she was talking about a recent trip overseas, and she needed a light because she couldn't guarantee a, an ideal lighting system. But traveling, you can't just pack up your giant floor hot light and take it with you. That's not going in the carry-on. <laughs> so she was looking for an alternative that was a little bit smaller and a little bit more compact and easier. And so I ordered the same thing that she had recommended because I didn't know what the lighting situation was going to be at New Jersey. And so I wanted to go ahead and grab one for myself just in case I needed it. Um, I ended up not really needing it at all. Um, be it the fact that I'm accustomed to not really using the greatest light. My light is just your standard Walmart floor stand that I've had since college, or floor light that I've had since college. It's nothing fancy. It's not a knot or anything like that. Um, so it could have been that I'm accustomed to poor lighting while stitching. It could have been the glow from everybody else's out lights <laughs> that just lit up the room. Who knows? Um, but I thought that I would show it to you guys just in case you're looking for something. And Christine was talking about this in her video too, so that, that kind of reminded me to grab this to show it to you. So this is the Nacal, I think. Um, I ordered it from Amazon for like 10 bucks. It was really cheap, but this thing is powerful. So it's a clip-on light. Uh, it's got this great big clip. Uh, it also has some rubber strips on the bottom so that you can put it on a surface and it won't like slip and slide all around. Uh, the neck is a ghost neck and it's posable and you can twist it all around, do all sorts of funny yoga poses with it. Um, and it is chargeable. So it comes with a, um, I think it's a USB um, and charger cord. So you just charge it up and then it's good to go. Um, it is also a touch. I'm gonna try to not blind you guys because it has three settings. So that's the first, um, second, and third. It gets pretty bright. Um, and so this is, this is a really great option if you're looking for um, something that's compact that can fit in your carry-on or your purse or whatever. Um, it's a nice little thing. You just have to be careful because that um, the touch part is pretty sensitive. And so I found when I got home from New Jersey that something in my bag had touched it. And so my battery was dead <laughs> when I got home because um, it had stayed on the entire trip home. 
Um, but so that is that is something to consider and you don't need batteries or anything like that. It's just it's all like it is. So something I got it from Amazon. Um, I will add it to the links below. So we're moving right along here. So let's go ahead and get right into the works in progress, both what I have worked on as well as what I'm currently working on. Um, if I get to stitch anymore today, I don't know. So last we spoke, I was working on none other than The Lady of the Flag by Mary Billion. She's a foxy lady, lady of gratitude, Sal. So you'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like the last you saw her. Let's see, I worked on her on Friday and then Saturday and Sunday after that video. And I'll go ahead and show you where I got up to. I completed the June goal. So I'm pretty excited about that. So just go ahead and pan up here. I've got a bunch of parked threads because um, I was really trying to finish the June goal. And so normally speaking, what I will do is if I've got thread left on my needle, I'll just go ahead and finish out that section. But I was trying to quickly finish the June goal and so I would just park, essentially. So yeah, looking pretty good, huh? The flag is done. Yep, the flag is done. Can you believe it? So I just have a ton of dress left to go. But I'm really, really loving her. She's looking pretty darn good. Somebody commented on Instagram, boy, that's a lot of bees that are going in there. Yeah. In these sections right here, there's an awful lot of beads in that area. Can't wait. Cannot wait to get into those beads. This one I did do the Delica conversion for um, because this is a 32 count fabric, so I just wanted to be sure that they would all fit. Mm, love. So this is gonna get a lot more days. I can't say it's going to get a lot more progress because traveling stitching is never quite the same. Um, but we'll, we'll sort of see what happens. So for reference, I am through about there. So I got all of that left to go. Probably about, I don't know, a third of the stitching, three eighths of the stitching still left to do. There's an awful lot down there. But uh, yeah, looking forward to it. This is just a, a rough copy, so I had an idea of, of placement and, and things. So there's that. So excited. Pulling her out as of tomorrow. If I get to stitch tomorrow, I don't know. Um, and on through next week. Okay. Next, let's get on to what I am currently working on. So as you guys know, on Friday I asked you all to vote and help me decide which whip I was gonna work on this week, this Monday through Wednesday. And the project that won, honestly should come to no surprise because it's one that is closest to the finish and you guys are very supportive and you want me to get the finishes because you know how I feel about it. I think that's why you voted for this. Um, so this one won like by a lot like a landslide victory here. Um, if I added up the total votes between Prairie School or Alphabet and Flowers of the Month, it would not add up to the number of votes that Afternoon in New York got. So that was pretty impressive. So let me go ahead and show you what it's going to look like finished. So there it is. I'll tilt it so that you can see. And I will insert a preview here of what it looked like the last you saw it. This piece I'm working on 32 Count Belfast in Ariel by Picture This Plus. And here's where I'm up to now. So I'll just go ahead and hold it here for a minute so that you guys can see. So the changes that I made, the flower shop is done. The flower shop is done. The bench is mostly done. Um, I added in the straight light. A couple of clouds rolled in, and I started work on the hot dog slash pretzel stand. And yeah, I'm really loving that. The roof here, 
is done in Picnic Basket, I think. I think that's Picnic Basket by Classic Color Works. And up close, I have to look to see the, the tonality or the variegation. But seeing it on video, it's definitely got some shade differences there. So I'm really loving that. That awning took forever. There's four colors in that awning. <laughs> Fortunately, they're all DMCs, so that was a little bit easier, but nonetheless, yeah, four colors. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited about the progress that I made. I feel like all of the major huge elements are done. Primarily the buildings. That's really the sort of the hurdle with this piece. It's just the, the brownstone and the flower shop. So now I just have a bunch of little things to do. I've got the hot dog pretzel stand here. I have to finish the bench, the cab, some more clouds, and then the bottom border that says New York. So yeah, it's totally reasonable that I could finish it here at the end of the month. I am really looking forward to that. Okay, so that's it for whips. So let's get into the FIFA World Cup Challenge. Now this is one of those daily rotation challenges that is being hosted by Stitch Mania. It starts tomorrow and runs through the 28th. So this is a good long two week challenge. Um, and so I'm just gonna run through real quickly and show you my plans for it. Um, the first 12 or 13 days of it is just one project but we'll just, we'll talk about it. Okay, so June 14th, host country Russia, something with a Russian theme by a Russian designer or using red, white, and blue, which is reminiscent of the Russian flag. So I will be stitching on Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia because uh, red, white, and blue flag. Um, June 15th, soccer ball, stitching something with black or white. Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia, there is white in the flag. June 16th, goal. Set yourself a goal today and meet it. I don't know what my goal is, but guess what? I'll be working on Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia. Uh, June 17th, FIFA. Stitch on something related to the letters F, I, or A. Um, so I'll be working on Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia. Um, let's see here. June 18th, eight champions. In the past 20 tournaments, only eight teams have won. So stitch on something related to the number eight. I'll be working on Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia because one of the symbols in this piece is an eight. So I will try to focus on that symbol on that particular day. Uh, June 19th, yellow card, stitch on something yellow. And I wrote here, uh, Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia, the yellow dress of endlessness. <laughs> June 20th, corner kick, stitch on a piece where you started in the corner rather than in the middle. And I did, I started her in the corner. Um, I started way up here, which is kind of how I like to do things now. Uh, June 21st, this is the 21st World Cup. Stitch on something related to the number 21. Uh, on the 21st is when we will be traveling to, um, from Michigan to Cincinnati and sort of getting into the swing of things with StitchCon. So I'm not thinking I'm going to be able to stitch a whole lot that day. So I'm going to aim for 21 minutes of stitching time on her, and hopefully I can achieve at least that. We'll see. I don't know. Um, okay, June 22nd, football. This board is called football everywhere but the United States. So stitch on something related to football, the American or the international version. And if you're stuck, stitch on something that has a foot or a ball. So I'll be working on Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia because football referring to a um, referring to American North American football um, is a very American thing and Lady of the Flag is a very American project so that's sort of the line I'm connecting there. Uh, June 23rd defending champions Germany stitch on something with a German theme or using red yellow or black. Lady of the Flag the yellow dress of endlessness. <laughs> so dramatic. June 24th, the World Cup trophy stitch on something related to an award, something with gold or something with a cup. Um, I will be working on, if you can believe it, the Lady of the Flag by Mirabilia. 
Um, and the yellow dress of endlessness can also be referred to as the gold dress of endlessness because it's shades of gold, shades of yellow. Uh, let's see, June 25th. Now we'll be back at this point. And so I am to stitch on something red. And so I will be working on my red Quaker sampler by Needle Knowledge and Cheryl Fall. And you guys, I am terribly sorry, but this pattern is no longer available. I tried to log in, I tried to go on the Needle Knowledge website and there's nothing. Um, so I'm really sorry, but this one's not available anymore. I have yet to be able to find it. Um, and I'm stitching this on a 28 count, or maybe 32, um, a Lamb's Wool Jublin by Wishalt using an orange and a maroon DMC. And so that's where I'm starting from. Okay, on June 26, uh, 11 team members. There are 11 team members on the pitch at any one time. Stitch on something related to the number 11. I will be working on Haunted, Haunted House by Clouds Factory because this is my 11th whip currently. And this is on a 32 count Belfast in Umbriel by Under the Sea Fabrics. Started this baby back in 2015 and long way to go, but that's where I'll be starting from. Isn't this fabric gorgeous? Oh, love it. Okay. Next on the 27th, Zabivaka. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing. Um, the wolf mascot for the 2018 World Cup. So stitch on something with an animal in it. And so I will be working on Elephants by Jane Nutley Mayhew. This is on a 32 count linen in aqua by Fabric Flare. And that is where I'll be starting from. I haven't worked on yet th this yet this year, so I'm I'm looking forward to giving this a day, but certainly more more than that later on. So that's my darling elephants. And then on the 28th, the last day, 32 teams stitch on something related to the number 32. Wouldn't you know it? Afternoon in New York is my 32nd whip. So I will be working on this for that day and then for the rest of the month until it's finished. So it'll be two more days after that. So if it takes me three more days, so be it. And that is everything for the FIFA World Cup Challenge. Now I talked last week about potentially vlogging for this challenge, but I don't think I'm going to do that because if I'm vlogging for the trip and I'm vlogging for this, like that's, there's too much overlap and so I'm not going to do that. Um, I might... I might vlog the last few days um, and then I'll do like a photo slideshow of Lady of the Flag for the other like 11, 11 days or so, something like that. Um, and then I'll do actual video clips for the rest. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I didn't think I was going to get to participate in this challenge, but being able to make one project while we're traveling work for so many days. Um, that was that was key in, in me getting to do this. Okay, let's switch over and talk haul very quickly, and I mean very quickly. All I got this week, or these last few days, I have a few other things in the mail, but I haven't gone to go get them, so we'll just go with this. Uh, this is my Fabric of the Month from Under the Sea Fabrics for May. And this is Dryad. My subscription is a 32 count Belfast and this is stunning. This is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the pink and green combination. Absolutely love that. So yeah, looking forward to um, to finding something to use for that. I just, oh, I love that. Very gorgeous. And we'll see what kind of haul I get at StitchCon. <laughs> I told Danny that whatever he spends at Origins, we're matching for what I get to spend at Keepsakes. 
But there are potentially two more LNSs that I will be visiting, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, I might have to forget about Stitch from Stash a little bit uh, because... I need to redeem myself from my terrible showing in Needleworkers Delight. So there's um, Cross My Heart in Columbus, which is less than 15 minutes from our hotel. And without much to do Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, might have to make a, make a journey. Um, and then in Farmington Hills, there is Rocking Horse. Um, and so might have to make a journey. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. And then of course there's keepsakes at the hotel, the little, little mini shop. And then, uh, Arlene has a trunk show at, uh, StitchCon and then there's keepsakes itself. And so all of the shopping, but we'll see what happens. I could come home with nothing because you know me. Okay. So then let's go ahead and switch gears and we are going to talk Okay, so the first thing that I have to show you is a finished knit. Um, I finished this a long time ago, but I haven't blocked it yet. Um, I was supposed to block it yesterday, but that just never came to fruition. Um, this is my finished Impressionist Mystery Knit Along. So this is a design by Helen Stewart, also Curious Handmade, and that's the back. So let me go ahead and flip it around and show you the front. Um, and I worked on this almost exclusively um, for the month of May. I finished it near, near the end of the month. No, mid-month. I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, so this is my finished Impressionist. And I am just absolutely in love with it. It's so long. Um, you can see the ends of it. It's crazy long. But... Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm a really, really big fan of how it turned out. So the theory behind this design is impressionist painting. And so you could absolutely use speckled and variegated yarns and whatnot for this one, which was, is great. Um, and a lot of people did something that was more fade. Um, a lot of people did, um, chose yarns that were um, lower contrast. Um, but I ended up choosing some pretty high contrast yarns because I wanted them each to show in their own in their own right. So um, I started off with Madeline Tosh, Tosh Marina Light in Salt. All three of the yarns are fingering weight singles um, and 100% superwash merino. So um, all from different dyers, but that same sort of base. Um, so. This is salt, and so it's, you can see it's mostly natural, but with definitely some salt, definitely some, some different colors thrown in. There's pink and blue and gold and even some black speckles. Then we move into the light purple, which is Hedgehog Fiber Skinny Singles in Birthday Cake. I don't know why I struggled with that, but yeah, that's Birthday Cake. And that was an absolute joy to work with because of the speckles in that. You see those rich blue speckles, and then we have these rusts and golds. Mm, absolutely loved that. And then there was a little bit of the darker purple, but the majority of the dark purple is here at the bottom. And that is uh, Malabrigo Mechita in the... Musas colorway. That's right. Musas. And so it's this rich, rich purpley blue and then this berry color. And then we finished off with a Pico bind off. And I almost didn't do it, but I thought, nope, I'll just go ahead and do the Pico. So it took me two days to do the bind off because Pico takes a while and there's over 500 stitches here. So yeah, it took a while. Uh, but I, I just love it and I can't wait to block it out so that the lace can sing a little bit better. I mean, you can see like this lace panel here pretty well. You can see that pretty well. But it's just going to look so much better when it's all, yeah, when it's all out. Um, there are some eyelets down here, but you lose the effect of eyelets in the darker yarns or the highly variegated ones. Um, 
but I still think blocking will help a bit. Anyway, I love this and I cannot wait to block it and wear it. So I just tried to put it on and try it on, but it's not really working with the jacket. Um, but I, once I block it, I will wear it and show you guys what it looks like on. Oh, I love this. Absolutely love it. So having finished that, we have an update to the yarn ball glass. It's almost full. There's a lot of glare coming in. Um, but so yeah, so let's see here. These are three are the new additions. This was absolutely all of the birthday cake I had left. Just, I think it's less than 10 grams. I think it's only like nine grams left. So this was a really great use of that. I have a considerable amount of the salt left, um, but I pulled off about 10 grams to do for my yarn ball. And then, um, I want to say I have probably 50 yards of the mosas remaining, something like that. So not a ton, but considerable. So that is the update to my 2018 yarn ball wine glass. Um, and if things keep up, I'm going to need a new glass. But loving that. Too much fun. Okay, so upon finishing my Impressionist Mystery Cow, it was time to cast on something that I've been looking forward to casting on since early April. I've been wanting to do this. And this is Anne P through and through. So first of all, I am knitting her, let me see if there's a picture here. Not a really great one, so I'll insert a picture. This is the RNG3 shawl, and I am knitting it out of Anne P's yarn. So let me go ahead and show you the progress that I've made. I haven't worked on this a lot lately, um, but this is going to get a lot of love this week because it's going with me and it's really great travel knitting, at least in this section here. Um, so this shawl is genius construction um, because what you do is you random number generate each section. So section one was using my color A. I'll talk about the yarns here in a second. Um, but it was using my color A and I random number generated uh, this particular section. I'm not going to give away what the two options are. Then I ran a number generated again for this version of the stripes section using color A and color B. And so I've got a long way to go on the stripes yet, um, but moving right along. So let me talk about the yarns. These yarns are all by Willy Wonka Fibers, which is Ann P. So they are all in her Arian Rod sock base. Oh my glare. Which is 435 yards, 75, 20, and 5 of Superwash Merino silk and glitter. This is a lovely, lovely base to work with. So we have this one here, which is the uh, neutral base with purple and gold speckles and orangey speckles, and this is Asters. Then my color B is Copper River. My cakes are falling apart. There we go. Copper River. And then my color C is Blackberries. Ugh, gorgeousness, right? It's coming up brighter. There we go. That's closer. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, to working on this some more. Okay, so then here's, here's kind of what happened. I got an email from Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade, and she said, coming soon, Shell Society 3. And I was like, oh, Shell Society 3. I'm not going to do Shell Society this year. I'm not going to do it. Um, I still have... The second of last year's Shell Society still on the needles. I haven't even knit the other four. I need to not. I need to not participate in Shell Society 3. And then she said, 
The theme for this year's Shawl Society, I can't say it too many times, is the secret garden. And so I just kind of was like, okay, well, I guess I have to do this. <laughs> but I'm only going to knit them if I can knit them from stash and if I really like, like really love the designs. And so this first one is called Maytham. So Maytham Hall is, was the inspiration for the gardens and the grounds in the film, The Secret Garden. And I think the story as well. Um, and so I was just, I was just sold immediately. And then we got a sneak peek and we got to see what the yarns were that she used to design it. And I was just, I was, it was done. I was done. So the way that she, the way that she does this is when you sign up, you get a very general idea. Um, and so she'll say you need, um, two skeins of one color and one skein of another color. And so I'm frantically looking through stash and I've got two skeins of a few things, but not really anything to pair well with them. Um, and then I found an option that I liked okay enough, but I wasn't in love with it. And then she released the full pattern and I went, oh, this changes everything. I'm doing a three color um, and it's gonna be kind of fade. It's not really, it's not a true fade um, in the sense that it's not using a, a true fading technique, but I'm using three colors that work in a line. And it's not from stash. It's just not. Um, the first color is, but the rest will not be. So, say lobby. Um, so let me go ahead and show you where I am currently at. I have actually just finished the other day color one. Um, so this is going to be a semicircular half pie shawl and it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I am not, I don't usually, I don't like to wear my half pies or semicirculars, um, but I might wear this one. <laughs> um, we'll see. So that's where we are at. And um, as I said, I just finished up color one. Um, so I had two skeins of this in my stash. This is Madeline Tosh uh, Twist Light, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it is a plied yarn. And this colorway is Dr. Zhivago's Sky. And it's just, it's this moody blue gray. And this is what I wanted to use. So the way that the Maytham is designed is that you use color A and then your color B and then you go back to your color A for the final section. So I was gonna use these and stick something in between them. But instead I'm gonna do this sort of dark to light transition. So we have Dr. Javago Sky and then I just got my color, my color B and it's a subtle, subtle transition. Almost no, almost not able to tell the difference between the two. Um, so it's really subtle. This color is Aura, which I have used in the past for another project. You can see they're a little different. And then my third color is a question mark because I thought that Aura was gonna be a little bit lighter, but I, I'm, I'm going to have to play with it. I don't have it yet. I haven't ordered it yet. So something a little bit lighter, just a touch lighter to go here. Anyway, so that is my Maytham shawl. Um, I have some brights that I could use, but I didn't want bright. I kind of wanted something a little bit gloomy. So anyway, so that's where we are now. And um, yeah, I am enjoying it so far. So I need to cake up that um, that aura and that might go with us too because a lot of this is garter stitch. I'm getting ready to head into the major lace panel and that is in color B 
so it's going to be a little bit a little less garter but that's okay the last thing in knitting is something that i'm getting ready to cast on um i have enough on the needles i don't need anything else but it being summer it is time for the uh, Through the Loops Mystery Shawl 2018. And this year she is going back to doing lace. Um, last year she did mosaic. This year she's doing lace. And um, I'm really excited about it. So this year she designed her shawl in two colors of uh, Miss Babs Woodberry, which is a merino silk blend. And wanting to do this in stash, I decided to pull... Uh, something that I had that was in a merino and a silk blend. Now I think that this has a higher silk content than Woodbury does, but that's okay. Um, this is Northbound Knitting Merino Silk Fingering. It's 50% Superwash Merino, 50% silk, so there's a lot of silk in this. It's super, super shiny. And I went with high contrast because I had these in stash, um, but you don't have to do high contrast for these. Um, you can do a pink and a darker pink. It doesn't matter. Um, but this neutrally one is papyrus and the purple is velvet underground. And I'm just so looking forward to using these. I'm looking forward to getting back into uh, Kristen Kapoor lace um, because I just like her aesthetic as far as lace is concerned. She likes complex lace and so do I. Now this starts on June 22nd, which is next Friday, week from Friday, so I will be casting this on at uh, StitchCon <laughs> because I want to stay on track with that as best I can. So I'm taking three knitting projects with me to a stitching retreat. It's fine. Okay, our final topic for conversation is books, and I'm going to grab all of the book stuff, and I will be right back. This segment is going to go pretty quickly because two of the books I'm not going to talk too much about and the third I'm only about 40% the way through, so not much to say about it just yet. Um, but my reading bug is kind of, it's kind of making a resurgence a little bit. While at the Floss Tube Retreat New Jersey, I spent, um, I was hanging out with Danielle Stitcherista and we all know she's a reader. And she was showing off her Fox Origami bookmark and talking about the books that she's reading. And I went, gosh, I miss reading. I just, I miss it. So I got home and I walked into my library with my library. I walked into my office with all of my bookshelves and all of my books everywhere. And I was like, I'm not going into this with a plan. What's the first thing that jumps out at me that I want to read? And so it was this. This is The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor. Or Torre. I'm not sure. Um, this is nothing like what I thought it was going to be. So this is about a girl. Uh, early to mid-20s, I think. Um, and this none of these are lily reads. So just just to let you know. Um, this is very adult, very adult. Um, she has a, um, there is something in her that makes her want to kill people. And like, not in the, like, I haven't had my coffee yet, so I'm going to kill somebody kind of a thing. It's like, she has this, this urge to kill people and she doesn't want to be this person. So she has locked herself up in her apartment and given modern technology, now this was written in 2014, maybe? Maybe earlier than that. Yes, 2014. Um, you can essentially lock yourself up and never have to leave. Um, if you've got the money to do so, you can order your groceries and have them delivered. You can pay all of your bills online. You don't have to leave. She is not wealthy by nature, and so she does work. She works from home as a cam girl. And she never leaves her apartment. She has this deal with somebody in her apartment complex who makes sure to lock her door from the outside so that she doesn't try to force her way out. 
Um, and so it's this psychological thriller. So in her line of work, she gets involved in this investigation as people, main characters do in these psychological thrillers. Um, she gets involved in this investigation and um, she finds out that small town cops are not doing what she thinks they need to be. And so she has to leave her apartment and try to be okay and not do bad things <laughs> and to, to try to help this investigation and this, um, this situation that evolves. This is dark. It's really dark. Um, I remember sitting at the New Jersey retreat and Leah was talking about how when she wants to read, she wants something lighthearted. Leah, if you're watching this, do not pick up this book. This is not what you want. <laughs> um, it's twisted and dark. Um, I'm reading some of the, the blurbs on the back and somebody said, um, uniquely twisted and captivates from the beginning a beautifully warped thriller. So this is, it's not for young adults. This is, this is an adult novel and it has some adult themes and some adult triggers um, for abuse of several different varieties. So yeah, but all around, I think it was pretty good. Um, I had some, some issues with the character, um, some things that I didn't like about how she was written but I definitely want to pick up the rest of the series, so I may do that. I think it's, this is the first in a trilogy. So there's that. Then, um, about a month back, maybe more, probably more, um, I started listening to the audiobook for To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Um, obviously, I read this when I was a kid. Um, uh, I want to say fifth or sixth grade is when or this was the assigned book. Um, this is the paper copy, but I was listening to the audiobook because the audiobook is narrated by Sissy Spacek. And she did a phenomenal job narrating this book. She's so good for this. Um, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful audiobook to listen to. This is the one that I just finished yesterday. Um, like I said, I read this when I was a kid, but I hadn't read it since, and I have always wanted to go back and reread this with an adult's perspective. And what I found was that, like, honestly, did we get edited versions when we were kids, or what? Because there are some adult situations going on here. Um, I don't know how well anybody else remembers it. But this was like a new read for me almost. I, because I just did not remember what happened. I knew there was Scout and Jem. I knew that Atticus was dad. And I knew that Boo Radley was a person. And I knew that... Um, it was set in 1930s, and I didn't know if it was Alabama or Mississippi or somewhere in the South United States. And other than that, I did not remember what this was about. <laughs> this is going to be hard to read. I mean, it was hard for me to read some spots. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was intense. Um... And maybe it's just because I am an adult and so I can appreciate what's being said. Um, and maybe it's because there are some themes in this that, as it turns out, are still relevant here 60 years after, after it was first published. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, this is a phenomenal book. If you haven't read To Kill a Mockingbird, um, you should. It's really good. And I cannot recommend the Sissy Spakey basic uh, audio version enough. It's really wonderful. So there's that. I have been wanting to get back to reading on my Kindle because I got a Kindle several years ago and so I recently um, 
I recently purchased another charger because my charger was, it was gone. Uh, bear with me a second. So I've been trying to get back into reading for my Kindle. And just the other day, I was bouncing around on Goodreads and this popped up in the ads and I clicked on it and the um, little blurb trying to sell you on a book sold me. <laughs> it said, if seven meets Silence of the Lambs. So seven with Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt about the seven deadly sins. And who was the bad guy? Uh, Kevin Spacey? I feel like I'm saying that wrong. But Kevin Spacey? Maybe? Um, and then uh, Meet Silence of the Lambs. So either the book or the film with Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster. Which I have talked to you guys about several times is one of my favorites. So I was intrigued immediately. And I started... I read the the synopsis for it here. This is the cover. This is the black and white cover, but uh, this is The Fourth Monkey by J.D. Barker. And it says on the cover, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, do no evil. So there we have it. Um, and so I started reading this yesterday. And now I'm at 40%. <laughs> and this is a 400-page book. I for whatever reason, just absolutely fell into this, and I have loved it. Here's one of the things that I like about it. This book has a perspective from the bad guy, and I love books that do that. I love thrillers and um, psychological thrillers where you get into the head of the bad guy a little bit. Um, and so the very first line, which is normally where you put a dedication, it says, don't stop reading. I need you to understand what I have done. See that there? Um, so I just, I, I've fallen in love with this. Now, I would add to the, um, to the comparison. So they, uh, they said seven, Silence of the Lambs. I would go ahead and add Saw into that. Um, there is definitely an element that makes me think of Saw a little bit. So it's dark. Again, it's very dark. Not a lily read. Um, very adult, but interesting. And I'm, like, seriously really enjoying it. So, um, looking forward to reading some more of it. I've got some theories percolating in my head. Um, which the best psychological thrillers make you do. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And the sequel to that, because apparently there's a, another book coming later this year. So that's that. And that's it for books. Um, I'm just kind of reading as my mood takes me. I'm not planning anything. I'm not scheduling books or anything like that. I'm just reading whatever I feel like. And so that's kind of what's got me now. So, whew, finally did it. So that is absolutely everything, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support of me and my channel. I hope that you're well, and I will see you in the next one. As always, y'all, be kind.